The Earth's gravitational field spreads outwards from the centre of the Earth in all directions. As the field spreads outwards, the force directed towards the centre becomes smaller. The connection between force and distance is that the force is proportional to the sum of the masses, the mass of the Earth and the mass of the object, and inversely proportional to the distance squared. This equation is explained in another video in the series. Distance and force are both vectors and one is measured in the opposite direction to the other. To correct the equation, therefore, there is a minus sign. The Earth is very large, and we usually lower or raise something close to the Earth's surface. When we have to calculate gravitational energy changes close to the Earth's surface, we don't have to worry too much about the change in the force. Over distances of perhaps up to a few hundred kilometres, the change in the gravitational field strength is almost negligible. The field lines are almost parallel. Over these very short distances, we can calculate the change in gravitational energy simply by multiplying mass by gravitational field strength by the height, that's E equals mgh. This simple approach depends upon little g, the Earth's gravitational field strength, being constant. The force of the Earth's gravity on a mass is the product of the mass times the gravitational field strength, lowercase g. As we have just seen, that is equal to minus capital G M M over R squared, where R is the distance of the object from the centre of the Earth. Little m cancels, and therefore the Earth's gravitational field strength is inversely proportional to R squared, that is, the distance from the centre. The variation in the Earth's gravitational field strength becomes very substantial if there is a large change in height. As for example, in the launch of a rocket. If as the rocket is fired we mark its rise in height in three places, each increase in height being equal to the radius of the Earth. Let's now consider the force of gravity at the first mark, at the first height, one radius higher than the surface. From its launch at the surface the rocket has doubled its distance from the centre of the Earth. Remember that the force is numerically equal to gmm over r squared. At that increased height, it is 2r, which is all squared, and that is equal to 4r squared. The force is reduced to a quarter. At twice the height above the Earth's surface, which is three times the radius from the centre, the force is proportional to 3r all squared, and the force is now a ninth of its initial value. Taking this just one step further, at four times the height from the centre, the force is then one sixteenth of its initial value. The energy to raise this rocket is equal to the force, which is mg, times the distance moved, which is h. But here, the value of h, the distance travelled by the rocket, is very large. The change in the value of the field strength is very large, and we have to take that into account. To do this, we integrate the expression and evaluate it between the limits of the two distances. That's a distance of r at the surface, distances, remember, measured from the centre, and 3r at the position marked on the diagram. If you don't understand integral calculus, don't worry about it. It's the end point in which we're interested. We're integrating with respect to r. g and me are constants, and we're integrating r to the minus 2. The calculation follows through here as shown. But you don't need to understand this to be able to use the concept of gravitational potential. The gravitational potential is the part of the equation which is ringed in red, minus GME over R. We use this expression to calculate the energy change when the changes in height are large. When a mass is moved from one point to another, we calculate the gravitational potential at each point, distances being measured to the centre of the Earth we subtract one potential from the other. The energy change is the mass multiplied by the change in gravitational potential. Thank you for watching.